Hello, everybody, and welcome to Desperate Measures. How are you guys doing today? Doing well, Neil. How are well. you? I am good. Fantastic. Huh. Well, doing well. Good, good. This is the first episode of our new campaign, Desperate Measures. And uh, if you haven't seen the character creation for it, there are VODs on YouTube and on Twitch or wherever they reside. Um, so before we jump into game, why don't we go around the table, introduce our characters, and then we'll we'll get into some trouble here. So let's start with the man in the upper left corner, Lucas. Who are you and who are you playing today? Uh, I am Lucas, aka Mr. Mutant. I'll be playing Ebner. He's a dwarf cleric of Tempos. Mm. So it should be fun. And, and tell us a little bit about him. I know he's not quite fully developed and everything, but... <laughs> Ebner definitely isn't developed, but he comes from a uh, very poor area and he chose Tempos because he loves thinking of um, the future and how times are going to change. So Ebner is very interested in, um, I guess, breaking his current like area out of poverty and kind of like fixing it. So Yeah, lovely. And next up is Connor. Who are you and who are you playing today? What up? I'm Connor. Uh, today I will be playing Jeb, the human ranger. Uh, um, he usually just kind of keeps himself out in the woods. There where he like lives in a little hut or some shit. Mm -hmm. uh, just hunting and whatnot. Um, making his own clothes and just kind of living off the land and shit. Mm -hmm. And next up is Tom. Who are you and who are you playing today? Hi, uh, I'm Tom, aka Azure Wind. Uh, I'm playing Callum, who is a human, uh, basically a street fighter, brawler type dude. Um, that's kind of how he made his uh, his winnings off of just people who were um, watching the spectacle of like street fights and, and betting and things like that. Um, he got beat down a lot. Uh, didn't win too many fights, but he's uh, he's just a uh, one tough sob. Uh, but mm -hmm. otherwise, he's a very he's a very he's not a he's not a mean kind of tough. He's actually pretty lighthearted and easygoing kind of guy. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, he really likes to uh, he really likes uh, his brawling. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. And last but not least, Will. Who are you and who are you playing today? Oh man, I'm playing Joker. He's a human male fighter, and you know, he's a woodsman. He goes out in the woods and chops down trees and brings back wood for the town. That's kind of what he does. Takes care of his grandma. She's getting kind of old, can't really mm -hmm. move around too much anymore. So, you know, gets the wood, brings it to town, goes to grandma. What's his grandma's Excellent. name? Grandma's name? Oh, man, what do we call her? Lily. Grandma's name is Lily. Ah, very nice. Grandma Lily. I, I, I pre-named because I had to name on the fly. We would never get anywhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So I've got some questions for the whole party, things that we went over when we made our characters, but it's been a few weeks. So this is our recap, refresher, and uh, quiz. So what is the name of the town that you are all from? Latrine. Latrine. Yes, it is. Uh, and why is it named Latrine? Because it's a shithole. Yes, it <laughs> is. All right. And uh, why have you left Latrine to come here where, you, where we will meet Space you? Baseballs balls too. Uh, we left to the search for more money. Yeah, get money. Yeah. yeah. And why? Why do you need all this money? Why can't you just live a life in peace, chopping wood and shit? Because the red dragon of named Scoria needs the uh, gold and up medals. If I remember correctly, she's not a big fan of the silver and the coppers, but she likes the gold the and up. Platinum. Or does she like silver? Too? Uh, silver, gold. Yeah, yeah. Uh, iron yeah, and so, bra so, so, so. bronze, brass, copper. Yeah, she doesn't give a shit about those. She's ones. not good enough for the, or she's too good for the working man's medals. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. I just didn't know how how good she was if the silver was still the working man's medal to her or not. You know. She likes the pretty medals, not those plebeian working medals. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 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 Yeah. And uh, let's see, what other good questions can we quiz you on here? Uh, who is sort of the the leader of this party? I think that would be Ebner. No. <laughs> oh, no. it's Ebner. definitely Ebner. Oh, it is Ebner the cleric. It, it Ebner, because he's like the town cleric. Yeah. Well, because and they're just like, he's all right, the closest, shit. Sure, I'm the leader. The closest person to, yeah. um, you're like the closest person to like, well, he's the highest off the floor, I think is the best yeah, way to put that. Yeah, there mm -hmm. you go. <laughs> Closest yeah. to God. Mm-hmm. You've got that divine intervention that you can wield from time to time. 
a good connection and sort of a, a moral center of the town. So uh, you've come out here to make some money so that your town won't get destroyed by the dragon when you refuse to pay, when you cannot pay the tribute. And these three people are here to help you out. And uh, what level is everyone in the party? Roll. One. 58. Wow. Hold on, I gotta rewrite today's script. Amazing. It'll oh, be good, good. <laughs> yeah. Well, I told you we were coming for the dragon today, Neil. We had a 58. Today. All right. Okay. Well, is there anything else we want to clarify before we hop in? Because we're going to hop in at a pretty quick pace here. Anything else we need to cover? Oh, uh, I guess. I'm um, sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Oh, thank you. Um, uh, I guess my character is married. Um, oh. I think the only the only other thing to say about that is that um, his wife is named Anna. And they're very devoted to each other. But Anna just doesn't like the fact that his chosen trade is very dangerous and i think she's with child too so she kind of just wants him to stay safe and you know so that the child can grow up with a father That's so you've decided all. to like fuck off to the side of the world and go fight monsters to make money to, to make money to to pay for them to so that certainly they can have a good life but yeah she doesn't she just wants him to be safe that's all. okay yeah. abner loves women but he's devoted to god and god only so Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, have you picked your spells for the day, Ebner? Excellent. I'm going to be going with, what well, do you want me to tell you or no? I, yeah, tell us all. I'm going to be going with Sun Scorch, Bless, and Cure Light Wounds. Excellent, excellent. Um, I'm actually going to let you change some of those a little bit because we're going to be starting the day on a dark and stormy, rainy day where the sun is not in the sky, clouds are blocking it, the weather is foul, lightning and thunder abound, and you have been searching, uh, no, I shouldn't say searching, you've been tracking monsters. You've already made it to Eridon, the kingdom to the east, and you're here looking for some sort of treasure because this whole section of the world's been ravaged by monsters, overrun by demons who then just sort of receded and vanished, leaving desolation and waste uh, in their path. All the big towns have already been picked over. You've come up from the south. You've moved through the town of Limestone, but there was nothing there to pick up. All the good loot's already been taken, but you did find tracks of goblins and you've been following them for a day or so now and you are arriving at their lair on this dark and stormy day. So you can go ahead and re-roll or re-pick that Sun Scorch. It's not yeah. gonna be super useful today. Um, okay, cool. Um, so yeah, here you guys are. Outside of a goblin lair, you've been creeping alongside of it. You can see the tracks, which are now muddy and pooling with water that's rippling with the rain, uh, lead right on into it. You've counted, you know, uh, at least four goblins were in the party that went into the cave. So you know there's at least four, but probably twice that number or so in here. Uh, and you have not a ton of reasons to expect treasure to be found here, but hopefully, hopefully there'll be some loot, some treasure lying around. I mean, it is a goblin cave, right? There's gotta be. So hopefully. what is the conversation? on the outside of the goblin cave. Uh, well, I guess I'm, I guess we're lucky since we're going in a dark cave that I, that I brought light for the day. Ha ha. That's a very good spell. I'm glad you have that. Maybe we can uh, put that on our front runners here. Yeah. Uh, um, thanks, Ebner. I was going to ask if anyone had a torch, but. <clears throat> no, no, no. It. I'll just cast this when it gets a little dark for us. So mm -hmm. you guys think there's going to be treasure in this one, eh? I know we went through a few of them and there's been nothing except bugs and... Well, hopefully the goblins have, have looted something. Hopefully they've been to acquire some wealth. Maybe. Hopefully. Does anybody speak goblin? Maybe we can go about this with a, uh, a peaceful... I certainly don't speak goblin. Myself. Absolutely not. Nah. Don't have an ear for it. Oh well, okay. Yeah, just remember, y'all, when we uh, when we go in there, them spicy little buggers, though, they'll, they'll get you good. Yeah. They'll get us. Well, hopefully we get them first. If you're not careful, they will. I've never been very much afraid of goblins. 
There's many so of them. Until you get there. surrounded by four or five of them on your own, that's that's a pretty bad time. That it is. What's the light level like? Uh, it is late in the day on a dark and rainy day, so the light is pretty dim. Enough to sort of see the outside of the cave with some level of detail, but uh, very little light is going to trickle into that cave. Basically, once you pass the, the mouth of the cave, you're going to be in dire straits. Got it. Um, and here we see on screen our character's tokens. Uh, this here is Callum. This here is Ebner. This is Joka. And this is the party leader, uh, Ebner. Did I say Ebner twice? You did. You said Ebner and pointed to Jeb. Jeb. Jebediah, not Ebner. I don't know what I'm talking about. This is Jebediah yep. here. I'm sorry. Uh, so let's kick mm -hmm. it. I'll tell you when if you need to stop moving your tokens for any reason. But other than that, um, mm -hmm. here's your goblin cave on your dark and stormy day. Um, and then light into me works like it does in 5e, where I can just cast it on somebody's like shield or weapon or whatever, and then that is like the light source, correct? Correct. Okay, uh, cool. There is going to be a duration on the spell that it should be paid close attention to. Um, how does it work? Light. I'm trying to find the duration. Has a duration. Oh, one hour plus one turn per level. And uh, for those of you unfamiliar with second edition, one turn is 10 rounds, ten rounds. which is 10 minutes, 10 minutes, which yep. is 10 minutes. Why One they round. decided to say a turn is 10 rounds. I will never know. It'll be confusing forever, but wow. just live with it. <laughs> um, OK, I'll look towards Jebediah and ask if he would like the light spell on him or who is who is leading our party. I mean, I'm I'm following the tracks, but uh... I'm not going to be going in first. Uh, I, got, Callum? I got the bow here. I suppose I could go in first, yeah. Uh, I will grant you the light spell on your... Do you have a weapon, or do you use fists? Uh, I use fists. That's what I was going to ask, is um, does it have to be casted on a particular item, or can it just be casted on a person, or...? Well, we'll it let casts... Ebner read his spell and decide. I'm just going to cast it on your clothing. That's your word, right? Mm -hmm. You can do anything you want to me, little. Wait, are you a uh, you're a dwarf, right? Dwarf. Correct. Okay. Yeah. You can do anything you want to me, little man. Okay. Uh, I will cast light on his clothing. Excellent. You now uh, illuminate. You don't so much like glow. It's not like looking at your clothes makes them shine in your face, but there's just okay. an aura of light around you, um, seemingly coming right. from every direction and no direction, uh, sure. only casting shadows, you know, directly away from you. Okay, cool. Awesome. Well, it sounds like we know who's in front and who's in the back. Um, Mr. Cleric, would you like to be in second or third? Uh, I'll go in third. All right. Lead the way. Sir right. Callum, whose name I'm forgetting already. <laughs> Good. Oh, uh, that's right. Do I... Yeah, yeah. No, you got it. Uh, so do we do we just keep dragging? Yeah, you yeah, move until drag. you see something that you aren't happy with, or oh, or I, gotcha. I call stop. You know, something like that. All right, let's pause right about here, because right okay. about here, there comes a. Ah! from inside the cave as a goblin that was on its way out spots you and like comes to a stop. I'm gonna roll to see if the party's surprised. Nope. And neither is the goblin. So why don't we roll initiative and we will play it out in turn order. The uh, goblin so screamed. It did give a, a scream, yes. So click on your token, click the initiative button in the upper left-hand corner, and add gotcha. the weapon speed modifier, which is associated with your weapon. Uh, our know. little goblin has a spear. Uh, let's see. Sorry, uh, Ebner guys. got a 14. Can I roll the right thing? Uh, I clicked the initiative thing in the sheet next ah, to the weapon. Is that that'll correct? That'll work. Okay. Uh, the, this is, if you're clicking your token, that should work fine. But I don't think your token was selected at the time. No, it wasn't. 
Okay. One, two, three. Uh, we're missing one person. Yeah, you're missing. You're missing me. How do I find my? Um, I'm sorry, my my weapon modifier. Right. So, so if you look at your character sheet in the combat yeah. tab, yeah, uh, you'll sorry. see a speed on the far right side, uh, and the speed is what you're doing. So with your brass knuckles, that's going to be three. So if gotcha. you click on your token, you. click on the initial button, hit the three, you should be good Perfect. to go. There you go. Lovely. Right. Lowest goes first, and that's going to be Jebediah. Uh, you're the first one Excellent. to react to the goblin's presence, Jeb. Excellent. Oh, we got a live one in here, boys. Let's get him. And uh, I'll take a shot at him. All right. Okay. 16 will strike the goblin square in the body. Perfect. I don't know why it added two plus twos, but I'll take it. So, uh, roll me some damage. Excellent. Uh... Minus two. All right. The goblin takes the blow to the right shoulder, uh, sort of stumbles backwards a pace as Callum rolls around. Okay. Um, so I'm not in range of him yet, right? So I would need to I would need to close with him in order to attack. Uh, correct. Okay. So I do have tumbling. Um, if I forgo. If I forgo my attack this turn, would it be possible for me to like humble close to him? Mm -hmm. Um, or w without him? Okay. Um, if, yeah, so you can use tumbling to reduce the, uh, to increase your AC to like dodge incoming attacks. Uh, okay. If you forgo your attack action. Right, okay. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. And then I'll, I'll, I'll use that to close with him. Sure. So you'll get okay. closer and sort of be in a, a dodging stance. Right, yeah. All right, uh, go ahead and uh, move yourself as you need. You have a 120 feet of movement that you can use, so that's more than enough to get wherever you want to go. Okay, Perfect. Cool. I'll, I'll move right here. Yeah. Excellent. And I believe if you are tumbling, you get an AC bonus of two. Yes. Yeah. Perfect, good. I don't have to look that up then. Uh, the goblin oh. sees the four of you here and is going to try and stab you, Callum, with the spear. Okay. Which is a 10 to hit, which is not gonna hit because you're tumbling. And then the goblin's gonna bolt, um, starting to yell and scream and run away. You are adjacent to the goblin, but you don't have a, you're, you're using your uh, fists. So you mm -hmm. don't have a weapon in your hand. So I don't think the goblin provokes okay, an attack of question. opportunity by running from you, but it does run yeah. and yell. Uh, yeah. And I will just keep it moving up to its full movement rate. Okay, that leaves us with Joka. Um, I guess we're just gonna sneak up here and just look into the cave. I can't really see too far in there, so. I think that's gonna be it. And I'll take a dodge action, I guess, for go my attack. If something comes at me, I wanna dodge out of the way. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's a parry action. It'll increase yep. your AC by one since you're a first level fighter. Perfect. Ebner. Uh, I'm gonna move up here and put my shield in front and I guess ready an attack. Okay. All right, and we're gonna come back to the top of the initiative order. Uh, the party sees no sign of goblins, but Jebediah, it's your turn. Excellent. Um, move right up here. And then, uh, like, take a corner right here, and then hold any attacks until I see, if, until I can see a goblin. Mm -hmm. All right, Callum. Okay, well, Callum is a little naive, but he's not stupid. So, I think he's gonna probably turn this corner, like two steps in front of him, and then turn to face like this way, and then. Here a little bit further into the cave. I guess it looks like he can't really see that far, I guess, by the interface. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I guess I'm being a little bit cautious here. Um, okay. I guess nothing else happened. Oh. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess I, I guess, I guess at the end of this, I, I look back at everyone else and I go, uh, uh, what are y'all thinking? Uh, should we go any deeper? I, 
I think so. <clears throat> I mean, we already came this far. Might as well see if mm. they've got anything. Even if they do know we're here. Yeah, just stay together. Okay. Okay. All right. Yes. Um, yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say, if I'm next in turn order, I just want to stay behind him. So. Sure. Well, it's been a minute okay. since anyone's seen the goblins. We can sort of step out okay. of turn order here for the time being. Um, as you're standing outside this cave, what are you gonna do? Well, we, looks like we got kind of two options, boys. We can either wait to see if any of the other ones come out, or we go further in. It's kind of it's kind of what we do here. Yeah, let's just, just go further in. Yeah, I think we should just push in together. Mm -hmm. All right. Lead the way, bright light. <laughs> All right, let's see. Is this a dead end? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, I'm so far zoomed in. Right, the sounds of the storm outside begin to fade as you get closer and deeper into the cave when you run into an intersection. It's a, a fairly large chamber, complete with stalactites and stalagmites all over, kind of hanging from the ceiling and jutting from the ground, with a passage leading north and a passage leading deeper into the cave to the east. Let's go. Split up here, or do we stay together? We never split oh, we, up. We, we should we should stay together. <laughs> I never think we stay together. I think we should go straight. Oh. All right, Ebner, straight it is. <clears throat> go. Got yeah. it, sir. Lord Tempos wills me to go forward always. It is right here. Let's give it a pause. When you hear this coming from behind you and four goblins who have readied their charge attack for when they could see you come racing down this passageway. Oh, you can't quite see them, can you? They're coming. Not the moment. There they are. They charge in from behind screaming at the top of their little goblin lungs, spears <laughs> out, practically naked, just wearing like a, a the base, most basic of, basic of loincloths possible as they bolt into your back line. Uh, and we will get three of them attacking Mr. Ebner. Uh, I don't think that's me. Yeah, that's me. Uh, not Ebner, Callum, thank you very much. Nah, it's still I wrong. Just, uh, Joka, I, can, I swear, I'll get your names right one day. Someday. <laughs> this one won't be around for too much longer. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, it seems like this one's going to be here for a while. So. All right. Uh, Since they are charging, they each get plus two to hit, but minus one on their AC uh, for the next round. And I was had my back walking around, walking down backwards, so I should still be facing them. You were walking backwards? I was, had my, yeah, I was. I Perfect. was the last one in line walking backwards. Excellent. Well, the first one comes in with a 12 to hit you. Yeah, that'll hit. All right. The little goblin spear is not a, a full proper spear. It's a, a spear for a smallish creature. So it only does D6 damage, which will stab you for three. That's the top goblin. The next one on the way down will roll 14 to hit you, stabbing you for four damage. Okay. And the third goblin will botch his attack with a modified nine. Uh, coming to stab you, but like screening too far to the south to really get an attack in it. Instead of the stab, it just like whiffs past your hair. And the last goblin, the injured one, is sort of dancing back and forth on the back line, waiting for a chance to get in. Um, and let's roll that initiative. Their ambush was very successful. Higher the better, baby. Uh, actually, no. No. <laughs> you want low? Actually. No. Yeah. You want those low numbers? Yeah, you want them low numbers. All right. <laughs> so if you can attack a goblin before it gets its turn, it still has a penalty to its AC. Uh, Jebediah, okay. you're the first one to go. Cool. I can only see two of them, so I'll attack uh, this one right here. Excellent. Give me that shit. Boom. Oh, you will critical. A, you will double critical, double which crit? is 
Ooh. Max critical. That is three times damage dice here. Nice. 86 boys. For six. All right. <laughs> Luckily, it's enough to bring this goblin down. It crumples and dies. Um, Good job, next person, oh, Thank you. Okay. Um, I guess I look back. Uh, uh, Joka is the one that took the damage last time, right? Correct. Uh, what? I I can. Barely, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble seeing. Is that too dark for you? Exactly what's happening, yeah, mm. on my screen. I could barely see, okay. Interesting. Have light so, on him, though, right? Uh, he does have light on him. I think it's a I difference between the brightness that the game is broadcasting and the, the brightness of the monitor versus the lighting in the room. Might, okay. It might be, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because on my screen, I can see from your vision and okay. you should be able to see to about here. Oh my, okay, no. No, yeah. not any, not anywhere close to that far. Oh my. Wait, is it, can you not see that far as well? Wait, or? No, I can barely oh, I'm see I'm sorry, no, 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 you should, it. yeah, you've got a 20 foot vision. You should be able to yeah. see to okay. here. I was uh, oh, okay. using goblin okay. vision accidentally. Okay, I got yeah. it. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, that's so dark. Yeah, there's yeah, only 20 feet of vision yeah. coming off this guy. Yeah. Okay, so I, I'm assuming that Callum only only basically hears things as to what's happening behind him, and he doesn't really exactly know what's going on back there, other than goblins are probably right. You can hear the up. slapping of big goblin feet on the ground. Right. There's shrill okay. shrieks and uh, gotcha. Joker's cries of pain as he gets stabbed okay. over and over again. Okay, so I immediately spin around and I go, Joker, are you all right? No. <laughs> 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 oh dear. Okay, so oh dear. He, he oh dear. goes. He he probably. I I I move in. I think. Oh shoot. Oh I I literally just moved my token right on. There top you of go. There. All right, let's move right there. Um. Okay, now I can see what's going on here. Okay, cool. So I run down the uh, the hallway and I take up uh, position right next to uh, Joka. Excellent. Uh, I guess. You... Yeah. Sorry. Do you want to make any attacks? Yeah, it looks like there's a there's a goblin. I should be adjacent to that tile, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, this guy right here. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna punch that dude. I think I get two attacks, right? First round. Mm -hmm. uh, one with your main hand, one with your off hand. Right, gotcha. Okay, so I am going to swing with my right. Your right fist comes in, connecting with the goblin's jaw. Roll me some okay. damage. Three. Nice. And you can okay. hear the crack in the jaw as the goblin's head goes far to the side, and he slowly nice. like recoils in pain, a little stunned by the blow. Awesome. And okay. offhand. And offhand. That uh, one has a minus two. Yep, no good with that one. You swing yeah. and you miss. Okay, cool. Uh. The first goblin goes. It's this one up here, and he's gonna try and take down Joka. That's gonna work. He's got the advantage. Joka's almost dead, but a five isn't gonna do it. The goblin stab is like a, an upward stab, trying to impale your head and like already get you on the spike so we can dance you around in front of his friends, but you can move back in time to dodge the blow. The deal. The next is, I'm just gonna move you away so you're not in the annoying way of combat. This goblin will step on in and turn his attention towards Callum, bringing the first spear blow against you with a nine to hit. It is not going to be good enough. Um, and the middle goblin will stab at Eb uh, not Ebner, Joka one more time with a four, another low blow that misses. Ebner, it's your turn. Ebner is going to walk up here and... Can I stab, like, through a person's square? Your spear is not long enough to do that. Am I able to move through a person's square to, like, move around like that? Uh, well, that's solid wall up here. Uh, um, this is cave wall. through, or no? You wanna, uh, no, you can't move into the enemy squares. Okay, no. so I can't really cut through and sink. No, it's, it's uh, not that wide of a path, and your Got two it. allies are in the front of you. You can stand behind, uh, even if you... If you throw your spear something, you might be able to make it, but you'll get a, a penalty to hit because, like, you know, there's a line of people in front of you. 
Is it possible to grab Joka like by the by his, the yoke of his neck or whatever and like pull him behind me or like pull yeah. him like okay I'll if you want to switch places with him it'll still provoke an attack of opportunity but it'll be against you instead of against him <sighs> uh yeah i'll do it all right so you grab him and try and switch places with him which gives uh, an attack of opportunity to hold on you might want to rethink that because it'll give all three goblins here an oh, attack of opportunity yeah yeah i definitely can't do that then okay. um i guess i'll class i forgot that i had this i'll cast cure light wounds on joga that's, that's cool one. Oh, that helps. that's a better idea i forgot i had that um, you... it's just 1d8 right uh yeah normally that would push you to the last in initiative because you'd be changing your action from your weapon but to your already is. but you're already last so it doesn't really oh. matter okay. um so Whoa. in this case just roll 1d8 and he'll gain that much hp is it 1d8 plus 1 because I'm a level 1 caster? Nope. Or... It oh. is 1d8. Welcome to the brutal world of 2nd edition. Uh, oh. What's it like when you cast a healing spell on your ally? What is it visually and auditorially? Like, what are the sensations that people might notice? Um, Can I make it, like, cool? So, like, make it, like, uh, it kind of goes back in time. It kind of, like, reverses his wounds or whatever. You can do it however you want. Yeah. That's how I'll do it. It'll, like, uh, reverse what happened to him and kind of, like... Uh, make the damage just kind of like go back so like the wound like visually wound describe like to me what happens to the wound really like the wound will like close and kind of like go Is back it, and close. yeah like leaving no scars or bruising yeah, or anything scars. nope oh nice like it's undone right. through time okay right. at the very end of the round we get joka damn you green goblins damn you and we're gonna hit him with my axe uh, 12? 12 will do. Who are you striking? The one straight in front of me. He's got to go right. first. Give me some damage. I you know. sever the goblin's head from his shoulders and he drops to the ground. Very, very dead. Um, and then, the end, can I attack and then move or can I? Yeah, you can attack and move. All right. And then I just want to move out here to the other side of these two and turn around. Excellent. And Jebediah, you get your second attack. Excellent. Um, Does this guy right here have any cover against me? No, maybe a little bit. What is 25% cover? Maybe. Cool. Um, let's see. Well, 25% cover is minus two to hit. So uh, a 12 becomes a 10, which hits a goblin. Perfect. A naked goblin. Six of them. Uh, six will overkill the goblin. The arrow hits him in the back. He stumbles, falls backwards onto the ground, an arrow sticking out of his chest. There is but one goblin uh, and the four of you, so let's roll initiative. Do you want me to click the initiative button? I can. I just got so used to rolling it off the character sheet. I just need uh, to re retrain myself. I mean, that's what I've been doing is rolling off the... Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, I think if, you're sl if you've selected your character token and roll off the sheet, it should be fine. fine. Yeah, no, it seems to be working. I just didn't know if you wanted it one okay. way or another. No, no, no. However it gets oh. done, it's fine. Okay. Cool. Uh, Jeb should actually have a 12. Yeah, there we go. Uh, Callum, you are the first to go. Okay. So this is the last, the last goblin that we can see. Mm-hmm. Um. Hmm. He's wounded too. All right. Yeah. Um. All right. Callum is Callum is not really one for uh, conversing at this point. I think he's just gonna take a sh take a shot at this thing. Um. So would this can would this be considered the second round of my combat? So uh, if I were to attack, I would get three attacks. Yes, you would get two okay. right now, and at the very end of the round, you would get your extra yeah, main hand. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Um, so right now, I'm rolling the main hand offhand, and then later the extra main hand. Correct. Right. Main hand's a swing and a miss. Offhand's a swing and a miss. Joka with the big axe. All right. Forget this guy. Stupid goblin die. It's not gonna happen though. It's not gonna happen. Your axe goes uh, that up. That was a D10. Oh, I'm sorry. That Ooh. was D10. <laughs> <laughs> not much better. <laughs> okay. It's a little windy in here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jebediah, maybe you can resolve this situation. 
All right, so if what you I'm fire doing is like, through Callum, it'll be no, so same look at, look at what I rolled. I rolled a plus five on there. So like swing the bow back over my shoulder. So it's mm -hmm. just kind of like hanging off me. Uh -huh. And pull out my spear. Uh. Like this whole time I'm like fishing it out in my back. You and grab your like, hand on the spear? Yep, and then so I can move up there and get him. 18 will do it. You will critical the goblin with your spear. Roll me double damage. Excellent. Ultra spear, boys. Let's go. The Hell second crit in a row? Uh, yeah. Uh, not in a row. Maybe not in a row. But... Oh, okay. Second crit. Doesn't yes. matter. He killed the goblins. The, goblins the goblin goes down, lying flat on the ground. Screwing him better than a pig on a hot run. Woo. Whew. Good thing we have the long spears instead of the mini spears like them. True. Uh, from deeper within the cave, you hear a booming voice. It speaks in a language you do not understand, but it is followed by a series of kind of sharp chittering noises from, well, who knows what. Does it sound like- I'd like to light one of my torches. Oh, oh. go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, does it sound like laughter or? Uh, no, it sounds like the, the, give me a charisma check to see how well you can interpret this voice. Uh, do I just click on charisma? Uh-huh. Sick. Uh, 14 is not going to be good enough. It's to you, it's just this big booming. <laughs> um, it could mean, it could mean anything. It could be a friend. Can I light one of my torches and throw it in the middle of this room in front of me? So I've got vision of what's going on in here. So if sure. more things start running in this room, I can see them before they're attacking me in my back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me get you a torch icon. And I just want to throw it in the middle of the room. I don't actually want it on my person. And it has 20 feet of light. Boop. Perfect. Okay. Uh, there's the torch. The booming voice sort of echoed through the cave. And a moment passes. Did you guys hear that? Maybe we should uh, go further in, or do you think we should meet it head on? Well, what was it? Did that? Do y'all recognize the voice? Did it sound goblin-esque, or didn't really seem goblin to me? Did not recognize it. No, I, I didn't mean, recognize it. Certainly it certainly sounded like no man or dwarf. I would agree with that. I would agree. That seems to be the case. Well, we know the goblins ran in from behind us. So do you think they just sat, a, sat on that north tunnel and to charge us in our backs? Or do you think they're actually that way? We've kind of got another decision to make. Do you guys know which way you heard the noise from? It sort of echoed throughout the whole cave. You know how cave sounds work. Actually, I don't know how much time you guys have spent in caves, but it, it sort of echoes off the walls and it can be difficult to interpret. One of you make me a perception check. Whoever wants to do it for the whole party. Damn. Uh, no, not sure where it come, came from. Uh, well, maybe we should hold this corridor. Uh, if it's huge, if it's big enough, which it sounded huge, I don't think it can probably come through here, but It'd probably be best if we hold together. Let's stay together, and I'd be willing to take point and move up north. I like that north. Sounds, cool. sounds like a great idea. Better than staying here. It's right. true. I'm going to let him lead the way. And... All right, I'll lead the way. Face north. We're going through this tunnel. See Are we gonna bring the torch with us or just leave it? Yeah, I was gonna say, can I grab the yeah. torch on our way out so I've got vision behind us too? Yeah, let That's me give yeah. you control of the torch. Okay. Um, there you go. Do I have to, beautiful? Do I have to worry about the light spell running out anytime soon or? Uh, it lasts for uh, uh, seventy minutes, and you guys okay. have been each round of combat is one minute, so it's okay. been probably ten minutes you. since you guys started. Okay, so we got a bit. We got a little bit of time. I'll whisper. The goblins came from this way, so maybe they're hordes this way. Maybe. Hopefully. Maybe not. What is this up here on our right, Neil? Is this water? Is that? Yeah. yeah. That's water. A water. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna... 
Hey, is there anything? Nope, that's just corner. Make sure you guys stay close together. Stupid orchard. Wait, what is that? Is that another nook over there to... Seems uh, to just oh. be a a large chamber with a small pool in it. Water okay. drips from the ceiling into the pool. And uh, you're right, there does seem to be something across the pool. Okay. Something, maybe. Who knows? Yeah. We're still not hearing anything yet. Mm-mm. Do we see anything now? Oh, <laughs> is there not anything over here? I'm nothing. Is there anything up here? Uh, it's, you know, just part of the cave. It ends back in a, a rounded section. Huh. A few stalagmites yeah. and stalactites hang or jut from everywhere. I mean, the goblins had to have come from this way, so they, there has to be like a way out, right? Or somewhere to go? Well, remember, well, maybe I they just want it here and waited on it. Was that there another, that. sorry. Oh, I do see. And then I'll point out, oh, wait, if we go down into the water, there's an entrance or an opening. Daniel, how deep is huh? that water? Uh, yeah. Oof. You know, the torchlight kind of shines off of it, reflecting. It's got to be at least a few feet deep, but it would be, you'd need to poke it to see if it's deeper than that. Sure. I'll take out, to, take out my spear and just lower the the half end down there, see how deep it is. Yeah, right here at the lip, it's only a few inches, but as you poke out a little bit deeper, it seems that it's at least uh, a foot deep and kind of soft, mm. silty soil down below. We could probably just stay on the, we could just like go around the lip or whatever, right? Everybody? We could for sure try. That's a good point. Maybe the uh, tall I'll, people should go first. I'll take a dip. I'll take a dip into it. And I'll keep yeah. myself on the uh, on the out on the edges. The water is cold. And it's I'll quite keep cold. my spear in front of me. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll do like a blind man, like using the spear to navigate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as long as you just hug the here. edge, you should ah. be fine. There's a ledge. All right, I'll climb yeah. up on here. Yeah, yeah, you you head back, and it's just a a dead end. Oh, Looks no. like when the water level is higher, for whatever reason, it fills into here, and when it's lower, it kind of drains back out. The soil over here is that same, like, bottom of the pond siltiness. And then we're back to where we started. Are we able to climb up? Mm-hmm. That's not too difficult. As long as you're not in okay. combat, you should have no problem climbing up. All right. So nothing over here. Wait, have we? Okay, this is, that's where we came from. Um, was there another cross section somewhere else earlier in the cave? There. We never completely explored to the right. True. True. That's true. We should uh, we should head to the right hand right hand section. Let's do that. Uh oh. Uh, I think we were here when we got ambushed before. Yeah, we never went down. It's true. Or is there over. anything off? You hear chittering, the sound of goblins from the south. <laughs> Uh, it's very clear that there are goblins down there. Uh, you can hear okay. them, and they begin to call out as if they're they're yelling at someone or something. Let's create um, a the three melees in the front here. Ready attacks, maybe. Okay. So we can all hit people who come, and then I'll okay. ready an attack. Uh, let's do that. I'll do the same. All right, let's pause about right here um, because okay. that that torchlight is great illumination for creatures far away from you, and as you step to this area, a flurry of spears, whoops, chat can't see, a flurry of spears come screaming down this hallway in your direction. Uh, don't have great range. What is the range of a spear? 10, 20, 30? You guys are 60 feet, so that's 20 yards, so it's medium range. So the goblins will hurl their spears two at uh, Joka and two at Callum, since you guys are the ones producing light or well illuminated by light. Sure. So the first two spears come towards Callum with a, ooh, a natural 20 and a 17. So those are at minus two because of the darkness, uh, because of the range, but then you okay. couldn't see it coming, so it's at plus 
four, so it's sort of like a surprise attack out of the darkness. So a 22 against you, Callum. What is your AC? 10? Should just be 10, yeah. Oh, unfortunately that is gonna do, that's a double crit. That is three times damage dice. And the 17 is just gonna be a regular hit, but you are gonna okay. take some serious damage here. Uh, where's my other D6? It's missing. All right, the double crit spear hits you for four, plus four is eight, plus one is nine, and the 17 is just a regular hit for one, so 10 damage total, which is Oof. surprisingly low on 4d6, if you ask me. Uh, no, Neil, <laughs> surprisingly low on 4d6 to you. And the other two spears are coming at Joka which is a three plus two is five. Nice. And a natural one plus two is three uh, is no good for them. I think uh, it was beautiful for him. I mixed bag of nuts here. Why don't we roll initiative? Actually, why don't we take our first break right here as you are running okay. into the next section of goblins. I'm gonna move you to a different map so we can all be assured okay. no one's looking at anything while we're away. And we'll see you on the other side of our break. Bye. Bye. Bye.